I seen Dan? You want to know where I am? I'll tell you where I am, but you may not be too happy. In fact, you'll be downright jealous. I took it upon myself to get out amongst the people, the people of America, to find out what they think about monster trucks on TNN. And as fate would have it, I ended up here. Tampa Bay, the beach. Not a bad place to be. Great sports city. Last January, had the NHL All-Star Game. This March, Final Four, so these people know about sports. Mike and Scott, I'll be with you throughout the show, fortunately for you, and fortunately for me. But I'll be coming from here. You guys will be in the booth. Have a good show. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Tampa Bay. Dan, it's great to see you're enjoying life. We are in San Antonio, Texas, at the Alamo Dome. This place is going to be rocking tonight with monster truck action. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Hogwood, along with Scott Douglas. And Scott, after a couple of weeks in Seattle, we've got interesting stories here in our point standings. Well, Gravedigger has taken the lead off that awesome performance in Seattle as they battle for their share of that $100,000 Pace Motorsports point fund. Going to be interesting to see if Barefoot, Monster Patrol, some of these others can make a move on this huge roundy route Chicago-style course. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun here in San Antonio tonight at the Alamo Dome. Love this course here. You're going to love the monster truck action, and we got it all for you on TNN Motor Madness Monster Jam. Now <laughs> well, we're in beautiful San Antonio, Texas. There's the river walk. What a great scenic place this is. Home of the Alamo. And of course, the home of the Alamo Dome. And let me tell you something. It is jam-packed here tonight. We have got a different type of course tonight. It's going to be one of the longest courses that we'll see all year. This is the Chicago style, or if you prefer the kind of the layman's term, roundy round racing. And let's take a look at it. You'll see they'll chase each other, as I'm doing here with the Telestrator. In essence, each lane has to make a complete lap. They'll finish where they start. Whoever makes the lap fastest wins the race. You are far more coordinated than I could ever be to draw two <laughs> lines that way. Hey, Gunslinger's getting ready to roll off against King Crunch. Scott Stevens out of Spring, Texas, so he's got a lot of fans here at the Alamo Dome. But I'm going to tell you what, when he lines up against Scott Hartsock out of Oldsmar, Florida, and the Gunslinger, he's taking on probably the hottest new Ford to come on the scene in a long time. Well, as you see, they uh, have been given the start, and Gunslinger is rolling. These turns are going to be tough. You've got to be able to keep momentum and then really hit these cars hard. You can really tell that the horsepower, is, as it always is with these monster trucks, is a big, big factor. Gunslinger looked like he's taking that turn pretty good. Good enough to get a win, no doubt about it. And hey, a little bit of that front wheel up in the air at the end, but uh, it's going to put him into the second round. King Crunch with a problem, and I don't know what happened to Scott Stevens, but he obviously was unable to complete the course. And as good as Gunslinger's run in his dapple, he would have been able to take him anyway. Gunslinger with a great run, as you said. They're getting that front wheel up in the air just a little bit. They're going to be able to use their horsepower on this track, and that's where we want to watch a couple of the big Hemis we'll be seeing in terms of Samson and also Barefoot a little bit later. They've got a lot of horsepower. Still got to make the tight turns, though. Little Tiger going up against Carolina Crusher. Gary Porter out of Wadesboro, North Carolina. He definitely would be the favorite here. Little Tiger, Brian Barthel, he is the uh, underdog. Well, when you're talking about Gary Porter, Mike, you're talking about one of the all-time legends in this sport. He's been one of the greats year in and year out. His rivalry with Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger is legendary. He's taken an upstart on here in Brian Barthel and Little Tiger. Right now, Barthel would love to put Carolina Crusher on this trailer. Oh, there's a... Whoa, ho, ho. <laughs> he really did a great save there, but that that's going to hurt Crusher. That cost him big time, but I'll tell you, you mentioned it, Mike, a great piece of driving, but there we get it, the upset. Little Tiger knocks him off because of that miscue. I'm going to tell you, though, Porter's happy. He still got his truck in one piece. He almost went over. We'll take a look at the finish again. Carolina Crusher with some problems. Little Tiger, Ryan Barthel out of Coon Rapids, Minnesota, comes away with an upset win here early in our monster truck action. 
Look at this crowd, Scott. It's incredible, isn't it? 53,877 on hand in the Alamo Dome, and they're rocking tonight. Yeah, they are. We got a lot more monster truck action coming your way here on Monster Jam on TNN. Scott Douglas welcoming you back to San Antonio on the Alamo Dome. What's that all about? Let's take a look at Dan Patrick's hauler. I think you'll be amazed. Okay, welcome to Samson Hauler. Here's what we got. This is the shop area. Um, we do all the repairs. I do all the repairs in between rounds or um, in between shows, actually. When we're traveling with the truck and the trailer, um, I, mean, I can come in here and work, do anything I want. You'll see where I've uh, fixed a generator for a distributor. And we stock off our broken parts here, so when we get back, we're pretty much set to go. One thing we definitely have that's very important when we travel like we do is a full shower. This isn't a camper shower. This is 150 gallon of pure enjoyment. The truck sits here. Underneath the truck is uh, storage. A lot of the heavy parts go underneath. Um, you'll see the small tires. That is the tires that it is transported on. Um, and uh, it sets up here. Then the, the big tires that you see on the truck when we race it, two go on the bottom, then there's an elevator that takes into the ceiling, and then there's the other two go underneath. So it's all packed in real tight. What's different from this trailer than uh, your traditional cup trailers and any trailers, this is a full-blown accommodating for living on the road. Um, actually has a 30-foot lounge, the living area, has a king-size bed. One thing that isn't in here that normally isn't in here, it has a home theater, satellite TV, you think, well, that's a uh, pretty plush living, but when you're in here 320 days a year, it's, it's, it's home, but it's still not home. <laughs> I'll tell you, that Dan Patrick is something. That's a great hauler. Amazing, and he's got to have it that way. You know, you mentioned 320 days a year on the road, and that may be just, a, you know, an estimate that's a little low. He is constantly gone. He's constantly performing well. We're going to see him in a minute. Right now, though, look at Reptoid. Isn't that a great-looking truck? I love Reptoid, the way it looks. There, Jim Jack is ready to go. And he's going to be battling against Barefoot and our old friend Todd Frolic. Todd is back behind back. the wheel. Yeah, he had a great, great run in Houston a couple of weeks ago. We're going to see him back in action tonight. And we've always talked about the power of Barefoot, that huge Keith Black Hemi engine. And Barefoot gets off to a great start. He negotiates that turn pretty good. It is really tough when you have that much power to get woed down enough to make that turn. Huge early lead for Barefoot, but he's losing it. He's up on two wheels, trying to keep it straight. Big problems for Barefoot. Something's gone. Something is absolutely broken. He had the race won. Reptoid has still not finished the course. Jim Jack, if he can get back on the course and come around and finish it, would win the race. Frolic did not cross the finish line. This is crazy. This course really wears and tears on these monster trucks. It's going to be tough on equipment all night, but, you know, they still haven't stopped the clock on that race because there's what happened. Jim Jack will actually finish the course and win the race. Did not get slowed down enough, tried too hard to make that turn, and... Uh, uh, there he comes. Reptoy's going to get the win. I don't think I've ever seen a race quite like that. Jim Jack goes to the next round. Wow. Not what you call a fast time, but Reptoid. Boy, I love the way this truck looks. Reptoid moves on. You know, you're talking about side-by-side -side or bracket-style eliminations. Doesn't matter what the time is. It matters if you win or not. Well, there's our buddy Dan Patrick back in Sampson. Yeah, going against Cyborg, Jack Coberna. Coberna will be coming out of Tulia, Texas. And uh, Coberna, longtime veteran, as is Sampson. So no rookies in this race. These guys know their way around the course. Dan Patrick, a 20-year veteran of monster truck racing. Jack Cabert has been in the business for 14 years, so these guys, as you say, do know what they're doing. Samson, another truck with all that horsepower from the Keith Black Hemi engine, 572 cubic inches, and he can put horsepower to the ground. Trouble with the turns, though, and that's going to be a critical portion of this race. Some of these trucks seem to have so much horsepower and get going so hard down that straightaway that... They just can't get slowed down enough to make that turn smooth. You hit it because Cyborg's given away a whole bunch of horsepower here, but he cornered better and almost pulled the upset. Nonetheless, give the win to Sampson. Dan Patrick moves into the second round. Sampson moves on. There's Monster Patrol. Paul Schaefer will be uh, handling the wheel duties today. 
His opponent's one of the neat stories on the circuit, John Seesock. We're going to have a great feature on John coming up later in the show. Right now, though, he wants that 96 Ford F-250 to knock off the big block Chevrolet power of Monster Patrol. It's not going to be easy. These kind of courses, Monster Patrol always seems to run well on. Great combination. He does have a lot of, makes a lot of horsepower. Got the big engine, but this truck really handles well. Watch Schaefer in the corners, although Seesock's putting on a good run right now. Seesock, a really determined effort, but Monster Patrol... I would have to say one of the favorites in this competition, and Monster Patrol is able to pull it off and pull away with the win. Ended up winning it by about three or four truck blinks, but I'll tell you, a pretty good run there for John Seesock and Sudden Impact. There's the margin of victory as Monster Patrol crosses that yellow finish line pole. You know, you'll be able to see both Monster Patrol and Sudden Impact at the Hartford Civic Center tomorrow night and Sunday. And here's Grave Digger, Dennis Anderson. Always a favorite everywhere we go. Going against Eradicator and Andy Slipko. He's got his work cut out for him. Newcomer pretty much in the business in Slipko and Eradicator. He has to go up against the legend, the world's most popular monster truck, Dennis Anderson, the original behind the wheel of the Grave Digger. Another truck that loves turning courses. You can see how well he gets through the turn. I was going to say, that first turn, he really got through it. Up and over that line of cars, and Grave Digger is motoring here. Almost slipped off the course, but you can see how far ahead he is. Dennis Anderson with a truly Whoa. dominant <laughs> performance. <laughs> and he kind of gives it a little classic Dennis Anderson finish. You never know where the Grave Digger's going to go when Anderson's behind the wheel. And can you hear that crowd going crazy over the Grave Digger? What a run by Dennis Anderson. Let's watch it right here. You can see him flying, and look how he nose dives the truck. And then as it kicks back up, Dennis is just trying to gain control at this point. Boy, that got the crowd here stirred up, let me tell you. Look at this. All of them really applauding, and as you can see the flags, they love Grave Digger here in Texas. That skull and crossbones going everywhere. Well, you know, there's going to be some great monster truck action as we get to the second round. Gunslinger Little Tiger will be a great matchup, and Reptoid and Samson will be going head-to-head -head after those first-round victories. Of course, Reptoid, a surprise because Barefoot actually broke. And we have Monster Patrol and Grave Digger. That is a huge showdown. After round one, we look forward to that coming up here on Monster Jam. You know, it's always great to see the monsters here on TNN. You can see them live tomorrow and Sunday at the Gund Arena in Cleveland. And coming up next, got the Pro Stadium trucks. You want to hang around? This is going to be fun here on Monster Jam. To Bennett Clark and the Clydesdale, but no stop at Dennis Anderson and the Digger as he advanced on into the final. Oh, well, here's a it, highlight. Wow, that is Joey Quick. Rolling over. Joey was okay, but <laughs> not that truck. No, no, no. Throw that body away. Barefoot was strong as always. Todd Frolic with a solid run here as he goes into the finals where he would end up meeting Grave Digger for all the marbles. And once again, Digger with a great turn, able to hammer the finish against wow. Barefoot. And as they do at most monster truck shows, some fun with some freestyle and gunslinger really put on a show. Yeah, Hard Sock got the Ford fans on their feet with that show. All right, our Dan Moriarty is not here with us, as we've said. He, he is somewhere in Florida. Dan, how about it? You know, the lingo on this show is incredible. Now, this week's Jargon Jam, it's loaded down to help you explain lean and fat when talking about the engine, flag bender, you can figure that out, and blurping the engine. Now, I have no idea what that means, and neither will you when this piece is finished. I'm just kidding. You'll know. Jargon Jam. <laughs> Flipping the throttle means that you nail the gas pedal on your vehicle real fast to try to pull out just to get that instant burst of power. And that's why we, well, we go to blurping the throttle. Well, honestly, I'm, I'm really new at this. We come into a problem where we have to such a term called blurp the throttle. It's actually called uh, coming out of a rollover situation. You might be halfway into the throttle. You might have to take your foot and put it all the way into the floor. Blurping is a new phrase to me. Now, when we fly through the air, you'll hear us rasp the throttle a few times. We call that rhythm, trying to keep the motor cleaned out. So when we touch off, you know, there's no loaded up fuel in it. 
she's ready to power her way out of the, any situation that you're in. Yeah, I haven't figured that one out yet myself. And if you turn too sharp, the truck's gonna wanna come up on you, and if you burp the throttle, you give it some more power so those tires will dig in and straighten you back around. Actually, if you hit the brake, you're just gonna go over, and that's, that's not good. So don't feel upset about that. I understand. I don't know about you. <laughs> Absolutely perfect, Scott. I'm ready to go. So do all these fans. Huh? They are fired up now about Pro Stadium Trucks. And this is always one of the fun events at our uh, Monster Truck Shows. And we got some good trucks going tonight. Absolutely. What we're starting to see in the Pro Stadiums is when Pace Motorsports comes to town and the U.S. Hot Rod Association is sanctioning an event, you'll get several guys who have decided to kind of follow the circuit because they see there's money to be made there. And there's a Pace Motorsports point fund available, but still a lot of the competitors are local. And that's what you have here, a mix of local guys against some of the touring guys like Thomas Ray White and some of the others that we'll see. That scooter hot shoe holder going up against Sean Zad in uh, this first pro stadium truck competition. And uh, they're not quite as fast, as nibble as our monster trucks have been. Well, this is a tough, long course, too. And I tell you, it's going to be hard, hard, hard on this equipment. Sean Zayot in that red Toyota. Well, it's looked pretty strong here. And he is going to take this first pro stadium truck of it. He'll move on into the second round and comes in right at about 45 seconds, which shows you how long the course is. Now, Jeff Hoy, one of the guys we were talking about, has been following the tour around, and he'll take on Flight 69, another truck that we've seen quite a bit. Look at hang time already. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Sean Gibson against Jeff Hoy. And, wow, we got one going slow here. <laughs> Big problems, and now, see, part of the ruling is you're not allowed to lap the opponent. You've got to keep in line. And so Hank Time's got the race won. He's just got to follow Gibson around because Flight 69, with a huge problem, can get no momentum. Hang Time is just going to go ahead and take him a leisurely cruise around and move into the second round. Jeff Hoy out of Katy, Texas in that 98 Ford. Just kind of taking a Sunday stroll here in San Antonio tonight. Hoy, as we mentioned, one of the guys who's now touring around with the Pro Stadium trucks and has really taken a liking to this circuit, has done tremendously in U.S. Hot Rod sanctioned events. You know, Sean Gibson, who uh, looks like he's got the car stuck in first gear, second gear, can't get it out of uh, into a higher gear or lower gear to be able to get rolling here. And so, uh, well, that's some big problems with him. And <laughs> Boy went ahead and gave the fans a little show right there and said, I'm going to get some air off the end of this thing anyway. And hang time trying to live up to his name. And the big green machine goes on to round number two. So Jeff Hoy has it easy in round one. He's a Texan, and they like him here. Look pretty strong in our uh, Pro Stadium truck competition. Next up, Troy Converse, who is the black 97 Chevy, and R.G. Stoltz in that Chevy Blazer. So... Kind of, I guess we call that deep. primer color. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I started trying to think of a color that I could call that, and I was in, you know, it's just primer. He, just, he just didn't get the paint out <laughs> on in time for the show, but he's here to race, by golly. And so is Troy Converse. The Converse is getting the better of it yeah. right now. No question about that. Well, there's some heavy-duty smoke coming out the rear end of Stoltz's machine. I don't think it's going to... It may not last the lap around here. You know, you talk about it, that whole Blazer's had a rough, rough night. So Converse is going to end up with a pretty much a walkover moving into the second round. Taking his time, knows he doesn't have a lot of competition. Is, <laughs> is he a problem or is he just stopped? He's trying to see if he needs to finish here or wait until he gets around. Converse wins it, though. Trust me on that. All right. Next, we've got uh, Michael Pendergraft and Mike Bendel going against each other. Whoa, a lot of hair there. What, Bendel took a beating as he came down. He's still rolling. That's a 67 Ford, and it's like it's none the worse for wear. He's doing okay, still rolling. That's a tough old truck here, buddy. Yes, sir. Ouch, now that hurt. When you nosedive in like that, that really shakes you up. Boy, but the crowd here, they love these things. This is great. Pretty easy win there for Pendergraph. He'll put the blue Suzuki into round number two. Hey, the fans are into it. You can tell they love these uh, pro stadium trucks. And one of the reasons is because, you know, these are pretty much guys like them in trucks that they may have driven to the arena to watch the show tonight. Yeah. Coming up next, it is Thomas White and Drew Haygood. Thomas White there in that 
Yellow Hummer. And Drew Haygood in a Dodge pickup. You're on board with Thomas Ray White. Don't get shaken up too much. This is what it feels like inside the cab of the Pro Stadium trucks on a tough course like this. And Thomas Ray White out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, you'll see all the bumps as they come up. This is such a tough course. You're getting an idea why we're having problems with the trucks really not breaking because the short wheelbase trucks are really having a lot of problems with the size of these hills. It really does. It, it <laughs> tears these trucks apart. And again, as you said, we can't laugh here. So Thomas Ray White has to be a little conservative now. He does indeed. Hey, good with a problem that Dodge pickup looks like there's something wrong with it, and White just kind of shuts her down as he crosses the finish line. Hey, good continues to roll, but not with any kind of momentum or speed up. And Thomas Ray White is going to take Twister three into the second round, and he's going to be tough all night. He'll be one to watch. The driver out of North Carolina has done well down here in Texas and has moved on. Uh, past our first round. Got to give it to Haygood. He knew he was beat, but he went <laughs> ahead and took a hard shot off that last jump, and there's what he left on the track, the battery, and more pieces. <laughs> oh, well, goodness. Yeah, he's going to have a little repair job, too, and his, some of our track officials come out to clean that up as we get ready to go now with Steve Martinez, who will do a lone run. This is a real advantage when you're in this kind of competition, a by run, because, well, I was going to say it was an advantage because you could take it easy. Martinez didn't. And he looks like he's broke. Something just broke off the bottom of the truck. I couldn't tell what it was. When he hit that first jump, he was done. It, it, that first jump seems to be very, very severe. And it's that first jump that is causing so much problem here. Let's take a look at what we're going to have in round two, as you can get a look at the winners. I think Jeff Hoy is obviously the guy to watch. But the locals are behind Sean Zayat out of San Antonio. We'll see if he can run with the touring guys as this competition moves on through. More Pro Stadium trucks, round two. We got more monster trucks on the way as well. Here on TNN's Monster Jam. Mike Hogwood and Scott Douglas in San Antonio sold out at the Alamo Dome tonight. Look at this crowd. And they're getting enough beat for these Pro Stadium trucks as we move now into round two. Going to take a look as we get a look at Sean Zayat going up uh, in the number one against Scooter Holder. Wanted to just take a look back quickly to the first round and just keep in your mind, Thomas Ray White, who we'll see later in Twister 3, by far had the fastest run at 37 seconds. He was eight seconds faster than the field. We'll keep an eye out on him. There's Scooter. Scooter looks like he's done. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> Scooter not going very fast at all. And... You know, Sean Zayat looks like I'd like to have that truck out on the road, and that's a nice-looking truck, and it is able to negotiate these very, very difficult track here. That's what's so unique about the uh, Pace Motorsports Tour where the Pro Stadiums come to town. The Pro Stadium trucks, as we've been mentioning, get a lot of locals just like Zayat, and look at how well he's doing against guys who do this every week. And Zayat is going to put himself into basically the semifinal round after two strong runs in a truck he probably drove to the show. Yeah. And Zayat is a mechanic for a living, and he has got that Toyota dialed in tonight, let me tell you. Because he looks strong in his Pro Stadium truck. White 69 is back with us. That's Sean Gibson out of Houston. To take on Troy Converse, who had a pretty good run first time around. Yeah, he did. Let's see what Converse can do now. Converse has got a very good-looking truck as well. And his also, the shocks seem to be set up well for these very, very tough jumps here. Right now, it's just a matter of survival. You know, you've got to be able to come back for the next round, and that's what's been tough on a lot of these guys. And you can see there's virtually no momentum for Gibson at all. He's still running, but Converse has eaten him up. Yeah. Sean Gibson is <laughs> almost stopped. He's going he's gonna to get he a push. Is, he might get pushed. Oh, my. Troy Converse looks... Uh, White 69 is not flying very well tonight. I can say that for sure. <laughs> this is almost like a parade lap before the start of the race, unfortunately. And I know Sean feels terrible. He's really ready to go, but he's just trying to finish the run right now to maybe have a chance to come back should some other trucks break. But he was definitely eaten up by Converse at that point. Troy Converse, another Texan out of Plano, Texas, in that 97 Chevy looking strong, but there is some fluid coming out of that machine. Yeah, that didn't look good for the winner. I mean, they're going to have to get back in the pits to see if he can make it to the semifinals. Hang time is back. Jeff Hoy out of Katy, Texas, ready to go. 1998 Ford F-150. And the guy you were talking about, Thomas Ray White, should give him some good competition here. Again, White was significantly faster in the first round, but remember, Hoy got slowed up following a slower truck. Both trucks get off to a great start. Best race we've seen so far, as we expected. 
Thomas Ray White is more than holding his own here. Look at how he negotiates this track. Halfway through, they're virtually even. It's going to come down to who hits it best off the final set of jumps. Oh, no, wait a minute. A uh -oh. problem on Twister 3. Thomas Ray White has lost power at hang time. Whoa! <laughs> Jeff so hang time is going to move on and win out of Katy, Texas. Owns a transmission shop and looks awfully strong. Hey, we got the monsters coming back. You'll want to hang with us. Monster Truck Action on TNN Motor Madness. Monster Jam. We'll be right back. Monster Mania is at its finest, and with PaceMotorsports.com, you're just a click away from the best hair-raising, adrenaline-pumping, spine-tingling seats in the house. From Houston to Pontiac and everywhere in between, U.S. Hot Rod's got hardcore horsepower right where you want it. Well, we promised you a story on John Seesaw Kids. Interesting feature. Sudden Impact. A fitting name for a monster truck. Sudden Impact should also be the medical moniker for driver John Seesaw. Back in um, November, I came down with a disease called Bell's Palsy. This sudden impact stopped Scott in his tracks. What it did was made my left side my, my body paralyzed. Um, most of it, uh, it, I'm a lot better now, but uh, it, my face is still kind of messed up. Um, but it'll get better. Since today. It's going to take a while. It's about a year for it to fully heal. His days of taking things for granted quickly ended. Part of my therapy was trying to blink my eye, uh, trying to uh, raise my eyebrows, things that people do constantly and uh, I couldn't do. When the act of blinking becomes a treasure, you can imagine how much family and fan mean to John Seesock now. It's hard to believe um, something like this would make you feel this way. It really humbled me a lot. It made me realize that uh, I do have a lot of friends and fans and people that do care and love me. And With weekly medical bills totaling over $300, Christmas was looking mighty slim at the Seesock household until the other drivers stepped up. And in support of the fellow Munster Truck um, races competitors that we have, uh, those guys came together and helped me out and helped give a, a Christmas to my family because of the medical bills and stuff. And, uh, and I, I can never thank them guys enough and the fans. John's face, weakened by disease, still tells the story. It's hard to believe people actually do care that much about us. And, you know, we're out here having a good time doing our job, but it, it's more than just a job. It, it's a, a family. Um, can't put in words, you know. It's a... Uh, it's hard to believe that people do care that much about us just because we drive a truck. <laughs> it's great to see John Seesock doing so well. I tell you, if that doesn't make you stand up and cheer when you see Sudden Impact come on the track, uh, you better check the ticker. I mean, what a great story and a great young man. Gunslinger on the track now. Scott Hartsuck, he is going against Little Tiger and Brian Barthel. Pulled off that big upset in round one, and they're off here in round two. Gunslinger is going to be tough to beat. Well, he's sure got plenty of motivation. Gunslinger not only trying to get up in the points for his share of that $100,000 Pace Motorsports Championship point fund, but it's his son's birthday. He really wants his son to enjoy seeing his dad get the big trophy and look at him hit the hammer. Man, look at that hang time. Are you kidding me? Great run. <laughs> Boy, Gunslinger hammered it, and uh, for that son's birthday party tomorrow night, it uh, might be a good one. He's looking good so far. Boy, you could see you talked about the hang time, and Little Tiger hung with him, but Gunslinger is the winner. Hey, you know, great monster truck action coming up live tomorrow at Dallas's Reunion Arena and at the Coliseum in Charlotte. And Supercross fans, remember, listen to the live webcast at PaceSupercross.com, 10.30 every Saturday night. We got more monster trucks on the way here on TNN. Off-road update. U.S. Off-Road, we had some fun in Houston. At the Astrodome, and you could tell they turned the dome into a huge stadium motorsport course, but I'll tell you, it wasn't kind to a couple of our Thunder Bikes as they took a hard spill. Everybody okay there, though? Now we get going. We have some good racing. Number one is Scott Meyer. Number 15 is Chris Knox. They put on a good show as they come around the turn. Watch them get up in the air. Well, Dyson for the lead, and you can tell it takes plenty of hang time. you got to be able to explode to get the win. But at the end, it was number 22, Dave Shade, who exploded across the finish line and into the winner's circle. Dave Shade gets excited in Houston and has a right to be. Here come the quads, and there's a good show there. Mark Earhart, number four, serious air as he was coming through. But in the end, Jeremy Shell was able to take the victory and come away the winner in Houston. And here we are back in San Antonio. And yes, they like their monster truck action here. A lot of smiles here. This place is packed. 
now we've got coming up here Samson against Reptoy. This ought to be a dandy race. Dan Patrick, of course, as we've talked about throughout the show with all that horsepower. Jim Jack and Reptoid, you'll remember, won in the first round only because of the problems that the uh, barefoot faced. So we'll see if Reptoid now is able to get things going and have a good run. Dan Patrick was strong and solid. Let's see if Sampson is able to move on into the semifinals. Earlier in our show, you saw the feature on Dan Patrick and how he spends almost the entire year on the road living out of that hauler. He is a great mechanic, as well as a pretty good monster truck driver. He's a true monster truck professional. Jim Jack out of Florida. That's the Reptoid going pretty good, but watch the horsepower now from Samson up and over, and Dan Patrick records the victory over a game Jim Jack. Reptoid was in the race until the final turn. Now, we watch it again. Samson and Dan Patrick, that horsepower just too much. Now, Paul Schaefer and Monster Control, Monster Patrol, can he pull off the upset? Here's our favorite, Dennis Anderson and Great Digger. Boy, this ought to be a, you know absolute main event heavyweight showdown right here between two of the greats, Dennis Anderson, Grave Digger, Paul Schaefer, Monster Patrol. Grave Digger explodes off the line. Schaefer now just gets going. We've talked about how well Grave Digger handles the turns on these type of courses up in the air. Coming around, it's all Grave Digger. Dennis Anderson in control. Now Schaefer will try to finish the course at this point. As Paul comes around, he finishes the course. Anderson locks him up, and we get word from the U.S. Hot Rod officials. Grave Digger has been disqualified for leaving too early. He red-lighted, and Monster Patrol will go to the semifinals. Digger's done. Big upset here. Grave Digger looks so strong, as you saw, but he jumped the start. Boy, there it is. You can see he just left the block too early. Dennis Anderson is always sitting on ready. That time he was too ready. So you can see who's advancing. Gunslinger and Samson have moved on, and Monster Patrol has upset Grave Digger. Those three will make the final four along with the fastest qualifier from the second round. Ought to be some great semifinal action. Well, right now we want to talk a little bit about Cyborg. Jack Caverna with a unique situation trying to get power to the rear of Cyborg. Most your weight transfers to the back of the truck. So front tires really ain't doing nothing but just going through the air. So with this concept, with all the weight in the back, the front ends in the air, we can, we can just scoot and hopefully in the corners, the front end ain't pulling you sideways. You can come around the corner a lot easier. With this truck, with the motor clear in the back, we're putting all the weight right on top of the rear end, get the maximum traction we can possibly get out of it for leaving the line. When you're leaving, leaving the line, again, the traction to lead the line. And when you when you go into the air after you're hitting the cars and the ramps, go in the air, the concept is to, to keep the weight on the back so the back comes down first. Because if the front comes down first, I have no way to pull out from it. I have to wait for the back end to hit, then I can pull out and head for the next jump. The front tires, the angle of the tread, see when you're when it's a, a power tire like on the back, you're catching this side of the tread with the power turning. So when you flip them around on the front, it becomes a steer tire. So instead of the, the tire catching the dirt, the dirt catches the tire. So reverse back the detraction for cornering or you know just going across the straight. In a lot of dirt sports, there's a two-wheel drive and a four-wheel drive class. So we were hoping, actually, to create another class of trucks. But it's a, it's a big jump for a lot of people to take and to say, well, yeah, it's safe. But it, I've had it on its end. I've had it on its side. I mean, it's a very safe truck. It, it works very well. Boy, real interesting from Cyborg on how he's doing it a little different than everybody else, but he's had a lot of success with it as well. He sure has. And coming up, we got more monsters and Spanky Spangler is back. You don't want to miss this high fall coming up. It's going to be something. And Ultra Cross events crossing the Frosty Divide. Get your tickets online now at PaceMotorsports.com. Arena Cross and Ultra Cross in every town you want to be. Two-wheeling, high-flying, dirt-throwing action is coming your way this January with EA Sports Supercross 2000. Fifteen unbelievable rounds to thrill and chill with the legends of today and the series of the millennium. Get your tickets now at PaceMotorsports.com. Here in San Antonio, they've really enjoyed the show tonight. Earlier, we had that famous stuntman, Spanky Spangler, who not oh. only jumped from the top Three. of this arena here at the Alamo Two. Dome, but he was on One. fire when it happened. Three. Watch this. Oh. Wow. 
Oh, that's why he gets the big bucks. He's Son. unbelievable. I don't what? think there's anything he won't try. He is unbelievable. One of the world's most renowned stuntmen. They're trying to douse him. Had some water Spanky. down there, and of course, getting the Spanky fire out, but also just I getting Spanky up so everybody can see he's okay. We'll he is okay. Up. Spanky Spangler, as you look at it again, a great stunt man, and he Whoa. has the crowd here in San Antonio on its feet. They loved every second of it. Uh, they've also had smiles on their face for some of the racing that we've seen tonight, and it's time for us now to get going with our Pro Stadium Truck semifinals. I think these are going to be pretty good. Ought to be. Now, we're going to get a look at Sean Zayat right there in that red Toyota. He's looked strong all night. Remember, this is the hometown boy from right here in San Antonio. Local guy just came up to run with some of the touring pros on the pro stadium truck circuit that goes around the country at Pace Motorsports events. And he's going against Scooter Hachu Holder. Scooter Holder has got his work cut out for him because I want to tell you something. Zayat's truck really negotiates this course well. Look at him breaking there. And getting around, he is another great run. Holder really just getting into this round after being defeated in the last round because of the other trucks having trouble even making the course to come back. Holder able to come back, but he's got nothing for Zion. And the San Antonio Red Toyota is going to head into the finals in front of the home folks. He's got to be loving this. Yeah, yeah, Sean Zion here, uh, you know, came tonight hoping that uh, for good things to happen, and we've seen a lot of trucks break here, but his is held together. He is a mechanic. You might mention a uh, good one as well. Hang time. Yeah. Jeff Hoy, here he goes, and it's a lone run for him. Well, it's a bye run again because of the breakage, the toughness of the course. But I'll tell you, this is the guy you want to see on a bye run. He is not going to baby it. He knows he's got a berth in the final, but hang time is going to see exactly what he can do on this course. This is our first real true look at Hoy, because remember in his earlier races, trucks were breaking in front of him, and he couldn't go all out for the whole lap. He looks strong. I'll tell you, Zayat's going to have a tough time beating Jeff Hoy in the final. Well, it's going to come down to Jeff Hoy and Sean Zayat. Oh, my. Is he tough or what? Out of Katy, Texas, so there's a lot of Texans rooting for hang time as well. Two Texas trucks will battle it out. And we also got some great freestyling for you. Coming up on Motor Madness, Monster Jam. This presentation. Well, we had a great night here tonight in uh, San Antonio at the Alamo Dome. And it's been a lot of fun for all of us here. The Monster Truck Action, Pro Stadium Trucks. We get ready for the finals now. Sean Zayat here from San Antonio. Can he beat Jeff Hoy? That's the big question. The local guy from right here in San Antonio has had a great night in the Toyota, but we know hang time can fly, and we're underway in the finals. A great start again for Jeff Hoy in that big green machine. Experience pays off for him. He does so many of these Pro Stadium truck events. He's having a great run right here, and you got to like this uh, Sean Zion. He may want to get on the tour. He is having a great run as well all night, but it looks like it's all hang time right now. Got a sizable lead as Jeff Hoy is going to come to wrap it up. Watch him hit this last jump because I know he's going to let the fans see some hang time. Well, Jeff Hoy does come around to win. Sean Zayat, though, from San Antonio with a very good showing, uh, making it to the finals. But Jeff Hoy and his experience really just too tough. No question about it, and he just is able to keep speed on every part of the course. And as we told you, he loves to let the fans see that truck fly. There's that hang time you were talking about. Yes, sir. They love him in San Antonio. He's from Katy, Texas, so it's not like he's from too far down the road. And a big hand from the fans at the Alamo Dome for a great performance from Jeff Hoy. Well, we're going to look at it again, and we're going to see Jeff Hoy go airborne. You know, the trucks weren't originally made to do that. No, they weren't. And Jeff's making his do it. All right. Hey, don't forget our man Dan is not here with us tonight. He's been out on the beach in Florida. Let's check in with Dan Moriarty again. I've got to spend some time with the fans of Motor Madness here in Tampa and find out what they really want to know about monster trucks. So till then, Mike, Scott, surf's up. I'm out of here. See ya. I don't know. Do you believe that? I don't Do know you about believe that. that? <laughs> I think the sun's gotten to his head somehow. I thought we were all on the same team here. Yeah. I, somewhere, I, you know, I missed something here. Yeah. 
too bad Dan couldn't be with us tonight because I think we've seen a great show oh. so far, especially with our Pro Stadium trucks and Jeff Hoy, as you, we just saw putting on the show. But Grave Digger getting upset tonight. Man, it's, it's been some night. And we're going to have an incredible Final Four next week. Monster Patrol has a great chance to make up some ground, maybe even take over the points lead as they battle for that $100,000 Pace Motorsports Championship Monster Truck Fund. Yeah, we've seen a lot of guys who've just really come out of the woodwork. And uh, I love this course. I love the Chicago-style course that they have here to, in San Antonio at the Alamo Dome. And, Alamo Dome, and it has really shown the true strength of these uh, trucks that have to handle and have to have some horsepower. Time now for our Maylox moment. <laughs> and it was Spanky Spankler. What a Maylox moment this was, uh, Scott. No question. I guarantee if I was up there, it would be a lot more than a Maylox moment. Spanky Spangler's incredible, though, and the Maylox moment is the world-renowned stuntman Spanky Spangler thrilling the crowd in the Alamo Dome. And for Dan Moriarty, Scott Douglas, I'm Mike Hogwood. We appreciate you being with us tonight on Monster Jam. We leave you with some freestyling. Where are you from, Michael? Uh, Tipperary. Have you ever seen monster trucks in Ireland? No. They're very loud. Very loud. <laughs>